Hi and welcome to this week's episode of the DW Podcast. I am joined by Stephen Purton, Scottish actor, uh, best known as Shell Soup Bob. That's it, Shell Soup Bob. That's it, aye, definitely, man. How are you getting on? I'm all right, mate. I just kind of <sighs> lazing about the house quite a lot, spending a lot of time with the family, but looking forward to getting back to a wee bit of normality. Honestly, we'll come on to this, but River City's off the it's, it's it a strange is. time for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I know. When I said to, uh, I'll give her a wee shout out, I said to my mate's mum, my Anne, that you were coming mm-hmm. on, she's a big Rangers fan and a big fan of the podcast <laughs> as well and she's like you're joking me you're joking me ask him when River City's coming back <laughs> well I don't we've not got a date exactly when we're back yet but I think hopefully back filming at some point in August and then hopefully back on the screens maybe September October time right. hopefully, touch wood must be a really strange time for you though eh? mate it is I mean I'm not used to no working I'm usually at the house quite a lot just always on set or doing panto or doing something on stage or whatever, but to actually, a weird way it's been good, if you know what I mean. Like I've had some great times with my kids and my wife, times that we don't normally get together. You're constantly like clock watching, going, right, I'm need to be in the studio in about half an hour or something, so I'll need to go drop the wings off. But it's been quite chilled and just some good family time, but good. don't get me wrong, I'm looking forward to getting back to normal. Aye, 100%. Aye, definitely. How did you get into acting? Because you grew up in the East End, didn't you? Aye, aye. Uh, aye. Don't, and don't, don't get me wrong, like, this is me being very... As if I'm judging people here or as if I'm putting everyone into the same category, mm-hmm. but I'd imagine for a young boy growing up in the East End, acting's probably the last thing in your mind when you're aye, it was, 10, 11, 12. Aye, definitely, mate. I mean, I went to... <clears throat> grew up in Toll Cross, then moved to Carntine, and basically grew up in Carntine slash Ridley. So went to Smithycroft, but I'd never really done anything... And even at Smithycroft, we didn't have like a drama department or anything, so we didn't do stuff like that. I had a music department, but oh, I was a young boy. I was all just into football. I wasn't really, was especially good at school or anything. So uh, one day they were filming, they were doing a movie, a Lynn Ramsey film called Ratcatcher. Um, we were all in school, but Lynn Ramsey's kind of, well, she was back in the day, she was a bit more kind of Ken Loach-esque, where yeah, she yeah. didn't really cast actors as such she wanted to get some real people in to do certain roles so she came run different schools in Glasgow so I'd done a weekend of screen test on that and then get asked to go in and I was like right okay so my mates are like what do you mean what, what are you going what's a callback what's this what are you doing and I'm like well they might see me again well I don't know so I went so in again you then, you? oh god I must have been I would say 12 13 13 <laughs> aye 13 I'd say right in they says right we want you to play the part of James. And I'm like, right. But the part of James was like the main part. And I was like, right. I, this is right. This is going to be quite a big... I'm like, right. Tommy Flanagan was in it. Right. He was the da. Mandy Matthews, who was drunk. She was in Tinseltown and stuff years ago. She doesn't act anymore, but she was amazing. I was like, right, brilliant. But then at the 11th hour, they changed their mind. Like <laughs> so they gave it to a boy called William Meade, and I was like, I was You're sitting gutted. going, oh, I told everybody in school, I was like, I'm going to be in this movie, and that man, it's going to be brilliant. <laughs> so they phoned me and says, look, the casting director said I'd change your heart, but obviously it's such short notice, because I think we're meant to start filming in like two weeks or something, so right. I'm sitting with my mum and dad, the producer's been out, but an agent's came out, blah, 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 talking about different things, I'm like, right, this is mental, I'm going to be, what they two bedroom house with my mum and my dad and Carntine going what's going on here so I told all my mates and all that and it was a lesson I learned never tell anybody about any part you get until you've got to part mm-hmm. in this industry but they phoned us and says look you've done so well in addition it's quite unfair what we've done basically but we still want you to be involved so I was there I had to leave school for like a month and a half or something I was there every single day on set they gave us a tiny part in the film mm-hmm. but Nearly every day while William was going to get his makeup and all that done, I was his like skivvy, I was on set doing the camera tests and Brilliant. stuff. But in a weird way, I picked up so much knowledge about how cameras work and how sound works or everything. So I just kind of soaked it all up and I was there every day and that was my proper first job, man. It was bizarre, but it was amazing. What was it like when you were telling your mates, oh, I've not got this? Oh, mate, it was, <laughs> brutal, it, it was brutal, man, because... <laughs> The school had a, like, I think whatever year I was in at that point, that's first century, I don't know, but the school get invited along to, like, one of the premiers. They had so many different premiers. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm like, there's buddy, no, I mean, I, I, I'm still in it, nah. but mate, honestly, if you blink, you miss me, right? <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and my mate's like, ah. He wasn't in that. I was like, no, oh, I was like, see that wee guy went buying the bike? That was me. And see that wee shot of the boy's horn? That was my horn, man. It's like, that was me, but... Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but... Mate, it was... When I look back, it opened a few doors for me and it kind of opened my eyes because, again, I wouldn't say that's what started me off in acting, but it kind of gave me a wee inclination that maybe this is what I would want to do, but still, I think maybe about... When it came, I mean, that must have been first year or second year in school, but when it came to, like, I stayed on school to sixth year, I still didn't know what I wanted to do, do you know what I mean? Through Ratcatcher, I met a guy who ran a theatre group, and I joined a theatre group called Toonspeak, and we'd done different plays and stuff. That's where I met Ian Robertson, Ian Connell, they went to that theatre group right. as well. Rab Florence, we all got on great, they were a bit older than me, but I was always, like, looking up to them. I look up to everybody, basically, they hate me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but them, again, going to that, I wouldn't have went there if I hadn't done rat cat. So it's yeah. just, it was a domino effect then, doing a few different things. But then, oh, mate, honestly, man, the same, the exact same thing happened after that. Because I'd done the uh, Toon Speak uh, theatre group and then the exact same thing happened when I go, went to Day Sweet 16. No, the exact same thing. It just, I got out the final two. Right. And it was between me and Compton, me and Martin Compton, to get the part. And I was sure. like, I've no got this, man. I was like, I've no got it. And I'm like, no, I've got it, I've got it. Then I get the phone call and he says, no, you've no got it. It's, we've got to go with Martin. <laughs> but I got a part in that as well. And I was... You were one of the muggles, is that Aye, right? mate. But, <laughs> mate, honestly, man, again, I was, I was a sore wang. So I was a wee bit older then. Uh, and I was kind of... I remember going to the audition. And I remember thinking what it was like when I went and done the bit in rat catch. And I was just thinking, right, just go in here, just go in. I don't mind, don't. But then when you get the call back, you get another call back. Your hopes go up, I'd imagine. And then, aye, and it's just, and I'd met... <clears throat> seen Martin a few times through the process and then it got to the point where I say there was about six days left, four days left and then when I heard, right, this is a final call back, it's between you and another boy, I went, I know who it is, I went, I bet you it's that boy, man, went in, there's Martin there, and me and Martin, I got him well with Martin, he's a cracking boy, but I remember thinking, right, it's between me and him, sitting, done the final audition, went home that night, sitting, right, phone call the next day, Hi Stephen, how you doing? Blah blah blah. I was like, I, uh, we're really Cut sorry. I was like, oh, I hadn't got it, man. I was like, but I, I, I still got a part in it. And again, that was probably at that point, as opposed to that catch when I done that, I thought, right, what McKen Loach, he was great, man. He was just like, just very, very calm. Just let you, I don't know, like using a kind of analogy with a football player, just couldn't express yourself to yeah, go on like that, yeah. to a guy that's got a free role, just going day to day, just don't really worry about the script, don't really... And you mentioned that their Ken Watch has almost got a, you know, a great way of picking people out of, you oh, know, housing aye, schemes aye, or, you know, out of schools and saying, man. you've got potential aye, there, definitely. Go, and, go and express yourself. He does, that's what he's like, mate, he's like, he was so calming and just, there was, he was just, Anything you kind of want, if you want to try something, know that I was walking on set on a Ken Loach set when I was 16, <laughs> want to try different things. I'm walking on like in every eye, it's not yeah. been going right, just get the job done. But he was always quite um, when you just try this, do that, don't worry about don't worry about what it says, and just try different things. So it was he's quite hands on then when he's doing something like that. He was, he was pretty, I was he was there and he was always talking to you, giving you pointers. Just, just I mean, I've worked with so many directors over the years, and you, you get directors that are very they're very technical. Sure. Or you get ones that are very, they're just all about the performance, do you know what I mean, like talking. But he was kind of somewhere in between where he just knew he was, it was his set, he was in control, he knew, he, he obviously he knows what he's doing, the guy's a genius, you know what I mean? But to work with him and to get a part in it, I remember thinking, that's all right, man. And then after that, I got the chance to go to River City and stuff, so it worked out all right, you know what I mean? But Compton went and done line of duty in that, mate, you know what I mean? What could have been? No, totally, mate. I mean, I can't honestly, like, but listen, that, don't get me wrong, Martin's got an amazing he's career classic, just now, he's fantastic, but you've done phenomenal mate, I yourself. Can't, I cannot complain, man, but mate, yeah. honestly, I've been blessed, man, honestly, like, I wouldn't change what I've done for the world, like, I mean, acting and stuff, to be consistently working, and, I mean, actors don't consistently work, you know what I mean, exactly. so, to, I've basically, since I left school, that's all I've really done, do you know what I mean, so I, I've been so blessed, and it's the best... Nay business like show business, mate, <laughs> do you know what I mean? See, when you're that age and you get told you've no quite got it, you've got another part, mm -hmm. does it dent your confidence going forward or do you think this I is think, an opportunity? Mate, it's like, I don't know, I've been, I mean, I've been to various auditions and it's weird, I think the older you get, it maybe does, but at that age, 
I'm a young boy, I'm just out of school. Yeah. You're a bit more fearless, do you know what I mean? You're kind of, you don't really think about it much. I mean, I was a bit, when they phoned us with Sweet 16, I was like, ah, oh, but man, but then when you get the party, like, you just go in here, do the job, but you're a bit more fearless, I think, and you don't yeah. really think about things too much. I think when you get older, and, I don't know, you I just... Think when you get older, you probably question yourself. Oh, more, I totally, mate. Yeah. Uh, you look at things differently, and maybe your confidence can go a bit more when you get older, but... When you're younger, as I say, man, I've just you're fearless and you just want to get a job and just get in and do it. Do you know what I mean? What about the reaction to that Sweet Sixteen as well? It's oh, still to this day, it's one of my mate, favourite films. Oh, it's brilliant, man. It was brilliant. It was just, uh, it was great, man. Because I remember when I was a wee boy, always watching Train Spotting and stuff, and going you know, Train Spotting in small faces, and then yeah. to be involved in something a Scottish movie that had quite an effect on folk like Sweet Sixteen, yeah. it was amazing, man. What's uh, what was your pal saying when you were at school? Did you ever get it tight? They said, "Oh, what are you going to do that?" Ah, it was always. I mean, oh God, man, I remember. I mean, as I say, I was never great at school. It was just all about football, football, football. Uh, hanging about with my mates. Obviously, growing up in East End, you do what you do. Different things growing up, but I don't know. My mates are always. I've had the same pals. Like I've got my mate Tam, Bert, Dell. Marcy, we grew up, we went to basically primary school together, secondary school, and we're still best mates. That's brilliant, isn't We're it? like brothers, man, do you know what I mean? So, and have you got always, any brothers? I've got a wee brother, weirdly enough, I'm yeah. 37, my wee brother's 19. Right. <laughs> so, it's yeah. a big age gap. That's actually similar to me, my wee sister's 16, aye, so I'm but my mates have always been quite. I mean, there's times of the years in River City where, pff, I don't know what I mean, you get, you start getting people noticing you, and you could maybe fall into a trap of being. Thinking, right, this is amazing, head, but my mates are like, and there's no the male like that than my wife, because me and my wife have been together 19 years. Sure. So we've been together before River City, so she's the same, like, she'll just, she'll never get in. Aye, aye mate, aye, totally for school, man, the same. Primary school, secondary school, then buddy, we go together in secondary school, and we've been together ever since, it's mate. It's funny that, because... Your character in River City is obviously <laughs> almost the polar opposite. And it's like, <laughs> how many engagements? Oh, a mate. wedding? Oh, he said, he said many engagements and weddings and that for top dinners, mate. Honestly, <laughs> mental. That's hilarious. So when did you go into River City then? Because you were obviously, correct me if I'm wrong here, you're the only person left for the first series. You went in the second episode. Aye, right? that's yeah. true, mate. I, uh, that was 2002. Aye, 2002, I think it was. 2003, aye. So I was there for day one, mate. It was, again, quite... The similar process, I'd just done Sweet 16 and then get a phone call. So I was working. when you come out of a film like that, Stephen, sorry yeah. to jump in, do, right, do you get a lot of people coming and saying, that boy was great, I want him for this? Is there a lot of offers on the table uh, for that? Or is it... No, for me, mate, because I went and worked on Cruise after it, man. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was in Cruise, but it was kind of... I got, my uncle was the manager on Cruise at the time, and me and Harry was there at the same time as well, and... I'd done Sweet 16 and then I went to Langside College, so I thought I'd go and do like, a kind of course in acting and stuff. So I went there, done that. I, when I went to college, I didn't really... Again, mate, I don't know what it was. I never really... I didn't feel like I belonged there. Sure. I didn't really fit in, do you know what I mean? So, I think that was to do with a working class background. I or? think so, mate. Aye, yeah. a lot of... I don't know. I think maybe in the arts, there's people that's more like a... Upper class. Oh, there, aye, there is, definitely, aye. I mean, when I went to college, there was a lot of boys that just... I mean, I got home with anybody. I got a lot of mates for different backgrounds and stuff, but at that point in my life, I think I must have been about, I don't know, 18, 17, 18, and I said, this isn't for me, mate. So I said, I phoned my uncle, I says, look, so I used to work in crews before I went to college. I says, can I get my job back? Mm. So I went to college. I was like, no, nah, I'll... I'll still go try and balance both, but in my head I'm going, I'm going to patch this and just start yeah. working. She want money as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I was working in cruise and then got a phone call for a casting director called Vicky, Vicky Beatty at the time, and she's like, eh, there's a Scottish soap getting made. And I was like, right, and she's like, eh, I've got a part I want you to audition for. Because she's seen me doing a play that was in with Ian Robertson for Toonspeak. She's like, I want you to come and audition for this part. I was like, right, what's the part? She went, shell suit, Bob. <laughs> I'm thinking, is this somebody taking the piss at me? Do you know what I mean? I'm like, shit, I'm so I was like, right, okay. I was like, right, well, when do you want to see me? And it's like, he came in the Mora, BBC, it was all BBC, Queen Margaret Drive, so I went in. There was about, oh, there must have been about, I don't know, about 50 folk there, man. It was so busy, sure, I went yeah. in. I was like, right, because I'm not going to I, I was just, not, at this no. point, I was just like, I remember the first edition, I went there, I was in a right mood, man, because my boss at Cruise was raging. I had to fight to get a half day. Right. I was like, and he was moaning, like, oh, honestly, mate, he was giving me tights. Like, ah, oh, wait, what shell suit, Bob, but you might go for it. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I've got this today, that day. I'm like, mate, let's go. It's not a half day. So I went, 
come back. I heard there's a big man coming back. People are getting banter. Everybody, there's the actor and all that coming back. It's like, right, about a week had passed. Call back, usual, goes back again. And then, it, usual, the same routine, right down to final four, final two. And I'm like, right, here we go, man. I've got a chance for this again. It's like, right, there's a final edition, comes back. And I think it was Real Madrid were playing in the Champions League final at Hamden. And George Square was bouncing. I was working in the warehouse at Cruz at the time. Right. The warehouse was just, just off Ingram Street, just right in the, the corner, aye, just so, in the yeah. corner, aye. And I get the phone call that day, and they're like, aye, you've got to part. Right. And I was like, right, magic. So I was like, and Cruz. I was like, right, because George Square was like, I'm a, it was mental right. that day. It's a fan zone or something like that. Brilliant, man. I was like, right, you've got to part. But it was only a three month contract. Right. So I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I leave Cruz? Do I, I didn't know what to do. So, because my when I went in the first day I went in, the full cast is there and every character is part of a family. So there's all there's like, there was like the Hendersons, the Marricks, the Donickeys, and then there's this shell suit Bob guy. And I'm like, <laughs> like, like I, so again I'm kinda I don't know, get into again like Gordon McCorkle, he's an actor, he played Deke in River City. Yep. Me and him are total opposites. Yeah. Like just total opposites, and I remember in the car on the way down, we get, we, I don't know how to go on with this guy, man, we just don't go on. Were you no. driving down together? Like, I would get picked up, right. so we're all young, me, Gordon, Carrie, William, who's in, who played pinball in yeah. Sweet 16, we're all going down together, all the young team, right, sure. and me and Wally going alright, but then me and God there, I'm like, oh, man, me and this guy, I don't know how to go on, we get there, checks the dressing rooms, we're sharing the dressing room together, I'm like, ah, oh, right, right, goes in. Ended up best mates, ended up around going brown. But we get in and we're sitting around the table in the first six, we the first three episodes. And I came in episode two or episode three, but in the initial scripts, I had no lines. Right. So I only came in because of amendments, amendments to get oh, made really? to the script, aye. So in the first three episodes, I had nothing to say. So we're all in this big table in the canteen. We're all introducing ourselves, and it was like cast number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was cast number 28, right? So it's going around the table, and I'm just sitting there, ah, pff, everybody's introducing themselves. Stand up, like Gordon's like, Gordon McCockle, I'm going to be playing Derek Henderson. How are you doing, Laura? I'm, like, I'm Stephen Purder, I'm going to be playing Shell Suit Bob. Boom, that was all I said the rest of the day. So I had no lines, I was just sitting there like that. I was like, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. I'm texting my boss, going, I don't know where to leave my job, man, I don't know. But then. What are you thinking? God, this is a waste of time. No, I was I was thinking it's obviously I'll be in it at some point, but I'm just thinking how long am I going to be in this for? You're, you're thinking, right, three month contract. I'm thinking, right, what are we on? September, I think it was August, September, I'm like, right, I'll get me through close to Christmas and back to cruise for my very Christmas sales and all mm. working there. But And is that because they didn't know if River City was going to be on for me? It was just like a pilot or? it was just kinda I think at, at the time they were I think I, sp I don't know if everybody was on three month contracts. I know I was anyway. Sure. But my character could have easily just in and out, now and again, yeah. boom, right, then it's not working, right, just get rid of him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I've not been fun out yet, mate, do you know what I mean? So, 19, 18 years later, whatever, I was still real, mate, do you know what I mean? So, when aye. did you think this is, well, obviously you were, took a few months to get into it or so, mm -hmm. but when did you think, I'm a staple in this, you know, now, without a doubt, I would say you're <sighs> Mr River City? Mm. I don't, mate, I, even now, like, obviously because of the whole pandemic stuff and you're seeing all the old episodes, like, it's so weird, I don't even remember shooting half of that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was sitting with my son the other night, he's only, he's five, and we're sitting, I'm showing him, like me wearing the old cap of trackies and all that, <laughs> and my daughter, she's nearly, she'll be eight next month, they're pissing themselves laughing, and I'm going, I can't believe that. It's still, it feels like yesterday that I started, but I'm looking at it going, God, I can't remember filming that. Do you know what I mean? So, I think it really, I really thought, right, I'm going to be in this for a while when, they started bringing in like a mum for me. They brought in Sally Howard to play my mum. They brought in Gus who played my dad. Then they bring me in a sister, a brother. So you start thinking, right, mm -hmm. if you're part of a family and a show like that, you've always got a good chance of staying. Do you know what I mean? Aye. So it's, it's a weird one. I still can't believe I've been there that long. It's unbelievable. Aye. Aye. And the River City in itself, it's a Scottish staple. Aye, <laughs> I know, mate, I know. Was there a time getting into it at the start where, like, obviously you'd done a couple of acting jobs? Was there mm. a lot of people that had bit more acting experience and you were thinking oh that's the reason why they've got more lines or was oh, it just oh mate big time like, I just, just a lot of people have to be high road oh, no? aye, mate I just went in there and just kind of like I still do it to this day man I just obviously I've got so much more experience now I know how things work I'm a lot more comfortable but in the days I would just go in keep my mouth shut ears open man just try and learn as much as you can because obviously going through something like Sweet 16 where you're on a film set 
and then doing stuff on stage and then get into River City. River City's like on a movie you've got like four pages to shoot a day maybe yep. and you can just take your time and you can experiment differently but in River City we've got like 14, 15 pages a day to shoot. Yeah. Pardon me. And you've got two two teams working at the same time. You've got a team in the studio and you've got a team in the back lot. So I could be doing like three scenes in the back lot but the studio need me in like an hour's time so you need to rattle through things. So initially when I went in and finally started doing some scenes in there, I'm going, man, this is quick. You're like, you need to be on it. Yeah. You need to know your lines. You need to hit your mark. You need to know exactly what you're doing because the call sheet needs to get completed. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's funny you say that because I've spoke about this before with people and I feel mm -hmm. that this might sound ridiculous, right? But you've got these Hollywood actors mm -hmm. that do maybe one movie, two movies a year, yeah. right? And then you've got people like yourself or Coronation Street East Enders, yeah. East you know, Aye. soaps that are on the telly all the time. Aye, and you guys are gra grafting and grafting and grafting. Aye, it's... Oh, mate, don't get me wrong. My dad's a grafter. I'm not a grafter, <laughs> right? My dad fits gas and tweet and all that, right? <laughs> I sometimes used to go... Nah, down, you can use <laughs> I used to go home sometimes go, I'm sharp. My dad's like, don't use your shit. <laughs> but, like, it is, I mean, like... It's a, but you said it's long days. And it's long, long days, mate. You can be in there. Like, if it comes in cycles, like... Sometimes you can be, like, in Monday, Tuesday, all for the rest of the week. Right. But... Then everybody gets a kick of the ball, basically. Like you've got a storyline coming up, and if you've got a big storyline, mate, you can be in there. Like I leave the house sometimes. I'm up at half five, leave the house at like quarter past six, in there for seven, breakfast, makeup, costume, all that stuff, and on set for eight, and that can be good to like seven at night. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it can be long days, and then obviously, like myself and Scott Fletcher and Jordan Young, we've got young families, man, so you're kind of going home at night seeing the kids they're going to bed aye, yeah, and then yeah. you need to start learning lines again if you're in the next day so it can be like a tough time man but oh, mate it's, it's a dream job though see you yeah. have a job that you do get paid for that you enjoy you're winning in life exactly. do you know what I mean how, how does it work then how how often do you film and how far ahead is it you film I suppose just for folk that are the into the, aye, that kind of business what's oh, it like mate, behind it's, the scenes aye it's, it's weird because we sometimes shoot like Christmas episodes and like September or whatever, do you know what I mean? And right. we have like a Christmas dinner in the canteen in September, do you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. So you're that far ahead. So we, we film February till May and then we shut down for the summer and then we film August to November. But like I said, you've got two teams working at the same time. So you're kind of, you're effectively shooting, what is it, like six episodes? Is it six episodes? Or sometimes six episodes, eight episodes over like two weeks. So sure. it's a big turnover because you need to accommodate for the months when we're filming, so you yeah. need to film that much in advance, yeah. do you know what I mean? But it's great, like like I say, like, we sometimes sit and go, if you're on a film set now, you like, this is so easy, because yeah. you're that used to working so much, do you know what I mean? Has there been any storylines that you've done and you thought, oh, oh, I'm not sure about this one, why are they playing me in this role, or is there, yeah. do you just kind of jump into it and think, this is it, I'm enjoying it? No, I, I think... Because I, I, I feel that your character almost gets portrayed as, you know, unlucky in love, Aye. and... Uh, Aye. Maybe a wee bit of a shagger or something like that. <laughs> oh, mate, that's honestly, man, that's what it's like. But it's, there's, mate, I've been lucky, like, that's what I keep saying to people, like, that come in, like, and they ask me how they enjoy it. And I'm like, look, see, to be there, like, 18, 19 years and still get storylines, man, and still be involved and stuff. I love it. But no, I've been lucky with storylines. I've had, like, domestic abuse storylines, yeah. like, quite hard hitting stuff. But they, cheating on my missus, getting caught, or if, every sort of thing you can imagine, yeah. mate, I've kind of been there and done it, do you know what I mean? But Do you feel that people in the streets sometimes see you as that character? Oh, mate, constantly, mate, I can't, <laughs> mate, I sometimes forget my name's Stephen, do you uh, know what I mean? Like, people call me Bob all the time, Honestly, yeah. even Grado, when we do the podcast, still calls me Bob, uh, Bob, 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 he's never called me Stephen in his life, that's do you know what I mean? So, eh? Aye, so when people call me Stephen, it's, it's weird sometimes. But you hear these horror stories of folk that are in soaps, and, aye. you know, maybe they've been a, a murderer, or they've, you know... Oh, had a domestic aye. abuse case, aye, you know, and it's aye, like aye. people only see them as that aye. character. Well, big Alex Ferns that came into the mm -hmm. show, uh, he was in River City for I think it was one series. He played Trevor in EastEnders, and yep. he said he had because his character obviously in EastEnders was a right badge and always battling his missus and that. And he says it was took him about two or three years to shake that. Like he was really, getting aye. in pubs and stuff, he was getting kind of people want to go for him and that because people they believe eh? it and you're like, mate, it's not real, calm down. Do you know what I mean? But that's how, I don't know, especially up here with River City, because I think it's the only real, well, it is the only soap they've got, it's the only kind of thing they've got, and they just, they're so invested in it, it's, mm -hmm. it's mental. What, what do people say to you in the street? Have you ever had any? Oh, mate, I've, I've had it all, man. <laughs> really? I've had it all. I, uh, oh, 
Can you find a night out and get a quiet drink or do you get pestered or something? I think, oh, mate, see, when I was younger, I would be, like we were talking about earlier on, where you're a bit more fearless. And Aye. I don't know, when I was younger, I'd do it all the time, sure. constantly, like, I don't know, like, burning a candle at Bay Fens, doing too much, like, sure. drinking too much, but you're young, you're earning money, you've got any responsibilities. Go anywhere. Especially if you're filming for a couple of months, then you've got a few months off exactly, or so. Aye. Aye. But nowadays I'm a bit, I'm a lot more wary where I go. You need to, I don't know, I can't I don't really go out much anymore, but there is times you day you go out and you are in certain places. Me and my mates, like I said, me and my mates have grew up together, they know if we're going to a certain place to go, we we'll no go to a man like it's not like I'm a Hollywood super, but it's just you need to be more savvy. Like nice in Glasgow, man, night, you yeah. need to be more savvy. You can go to some places and it's a wee bit more Rowdy and that, like I've had a couple of times where I've been out and people have wanted to start with you and you're like, you can't be bothered with that shit, yeah, do you know what I mean? Sense. But there's, I've been lucky, I've, I think my character's, he's, oh, he's easy to like, he's yeah. not really a bad guy, he's not really got any side to him really, so yeah. I've been lucky that way, but I've not really had the whole range of self can get the old, odd bit of banter about that, but it's all great. Have you got any experience being a mechanic then, or have you? Mate, my brother was a mechanic. He's got a garage <laughs> and he absolutely pans me when he sees me on the other side. He's like, ah, you're not wearing the right footwear, you're not wearing gloves. You've had that wee feet put on your motor since two th- in your garage since 2005. You're like, I'm like, mate, it's not to do with me. I don't know how motors me. I just not to drive them, that's, that's it, man. Aye. What I wanted to ask you about, there was, obviously recently you've done the stage show for the Benny Lunch mm-hmm. show. And uh, maybe for those that are watching that haven't heard of Benny Lynch, aye. he's obviously Scotland's first world champion yep. boxer back in the 30s, 1930s. 30s, mate, aye. He was, correct me again if I'm wrong, but he was, I think, became that in about early t- mid 20s mm-hmm. and then aye. died in his early 30s. Died but the story in itself is fantastic. And oh, mate. You played the main <sighs> character. It was brilliant, mate. It was, it, was a, it was an experience. It was just, I remember Simon Weir, who was involved with the project. Mm. He asked me about it a few years. We were at an audition for some... Oh, I can't remember the name of the show. It was on BBC One. Another one of my field auditions, mate. I didn't get the part, man. <laughs> but we were there. And Simon says, wait, I'm doing this thing. I'm involved with this, the Benny Lynch story. And as soon as he said Benny Lynch, I'm like, aye. I was like, I'd be up for that totally. Let me see the script when it's ready. But I never heard anything for about a year and a half. And then him, Simon and David Carswell, who wrote it, they got in touch and said, right, we've got a script ready now. And I'm like... About time, mate. It's been a year and a half. I mean, let's see it, man. Let's see it. Aye, let's see it. So he showed us it. And did you know from the start I'm going to be the main character here? Aye, this is when you play Benny Lynch, and right away I'm like, right, aye. That's class. Aye. Just, I'm totally into it, man. I'm just going, right, I hope the script is good. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if we read the script, it's like, right, what's happening when we're doing it, basically? I'm like, right, we want to kind of tour it. And for me to be doing River City for so long, you do have an itch you want to scratch, mate. You're going, I want to do something else. I want, know that I would ever leave River City. Just going, you want to challenge yourself. You want to do something different. And sure. for me, 18 years, 19 years in River City, just getting in every day, doing River City, then doing Panto. River City, Panto, I was going, right, this is something totally different. Mm-hmm. And try to just to break the mould a wee bit. Going, right, I'm no shell suit Bob. I'm just an actor playing yeah. Benny Lynch. So... And I it suppose was that's probably quite hard for people, you know, because I've seen totally you mate, for I, eighteen years being the same person. Oh, totally, mate, totally. But it was, it was brilliant, mate. I loved everybody. I loved the whole because obviously I had to go training for it. I had to. You did boxing training, oh, mate. Because I was on stage with my tap after my boxing. I was like, I need to. <laughs> I need had to, to watch part. endless videos of how Benny Lynch moved, how he was with his feet, how quickly he punched. It was, mate. I won't lie, about maybe for six months leading up to it, man. It was. It was dark times, man. Like, see, totally oh, pushing yourself, going to. Except my Nicola's cousin, eh, Nicola's, I, her cousin's man, used to be involved in boxing. So he put us in touch with Billy Nelson, the trainer, used to train Ricky Burns. Brilliant. So I mean, Billy, quite pally now after he was like, I, I come to the gym, we'll date and that. And he's slaughtering you, putting oh, you your faces. Mate, it, was, <laughs> it was like, oh, like full metal jacket, man. It was like pure. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this first week or so. I was like, I cannot do this, man. Yeah. But. I just kept saying to myself, if you don't do it, man, that one night, you're on stage and you take a tap off, you will look ridiculous, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I was like, you just need to do it, but it was hard going. But again, that side of it, just challenging myself, giving myself a total different mindset, a goal, just to get my teeth right into something different, man. It was it was a great experience. It's really well received as well, eh? It was, it went well, mate. It sold well. We've done it down here, done it at Motherwell. Well, uh, Motherwell, they're not really the place, man. Danoon, Motherwell. Was there meant to be more shows this year, is there? No, we, we were... There was talk about it, mate. Mm-hmm. Because we really, the only venues, well, the only place we didn't really 
Yeah. They were all over, weren't they? <clears throat> Absolutely. All over, apart from Glasgow. Aye. Which is strange, because that's like, where he's... He was born in the Gorbals, and I'm like, right, we need to do one in Glasgow, but we didn't really, we wanted to do a tour first, and then have a kind of, just a run in Glasgow on its own. Sure. Which we were maybe planning to do, but obviously, with everything that's happened, with the pandemic stuff, we're not really sure, but... Maybe there's, still aware in the future, or? There's still, there's still something there, and I still think there's a, there's a television thing there, there's a series, or there's a kind of, there's a movie, there's a kind of Peaky Blinders-esque kind of vibe to it, do you know what I mean? Because it's for that kind of time, and there's just something there, and it's just, it's a story that just absolutely amazes me, like, reading up on him and trying to portray that character, and... I mean, he wasn't a nice person either. There was towards the end of his life, he was a horrible person. He was barting his missus and today stuff like that on stage. It, I don't mean it was, but it was just great for an actor because yep. you're going through every emotion. It's going through that hero. Is he? It is, is mate. It is. It's a rags to riches to rags again. You know what I mean? He's kind of the first half of the play. He's grown up in the gorbals, but. Again, like what so I, kept... I suppose, growing up in the Gorbals as well, has like Aye. he was a championship boxer, but he was surrounded by a lot of oh, dodgy I mean, characters. You and see. like I said, man, like when we're doing it, when you read in it so much, in this day and age, there's so much onus and so much chat about mental health amongst men. Like he must have suffered for that mm. so badly, but yeah. in the days, there's no help. For it's not the support networks. That you're no, exactly, and for athletes especially, they've got. Football players, boxers, Formula One, everybody, they, there's, there's somebody they can go to, they can talk about it. And But in the days, you imagine like Benny Lynch walking into a pub in the Gorbals saying, I don't feel right in the head, it's not going to happen. Man up, time to ah, he lost his this. brother mm. at a really young age, he lost his sister. I'm not making excuses for the guy, what he'd done towards the end of his life was bad, but okay. for an actor to play that part, it was it was brilliant, I loved it. And there's been a lot of talk recently about, did they get a statue for him in the Gorbals, or was talk about there's it? There's the, the thing that, that's been going on for a long time, they've been... They've been raising money for it for ages. I don't know where it's at the new again, but everything else, I don't know if it's been kind of held up. But I think they've, they've more or less got the amount of money you need. I'd imagine it's harder to do uh, on stage rather than oh, screenplay because you can't was... make mistakes, can you? It's... Mate, it was not a... that you would. Not no, that you would. mate, I said because we got, we got Stephen Duffy directed it, who was in Small Faces and stuff. He's a friend of Ian Robertson's and stuff. And he's done a lot of stuff on stage. And I've known. I used to, I'd done a lot of stuff on stage when I was younger, like through my theatre group, but that's a totally, yeah. nothing compared to this. So I was like, I, I said to the writer and stuff, right, let me get people that I want to get. So I said to Stephen Duffy, I was like, look, when we're in the rehearsal room, I says, absolutely, go through me, yeah. keep me right, don't care what, if you're insulting me, if my performance is shite, tell, tell me, me, just tell me. So just because me, me getting on stage, like, first couple of days in, on stage, because with Holly Jack involved in it as well, she played my so wife. River City as well, aye, aye, she played my wife in it. It's Holly Fairdry, is that She Fairdry, me. Aye, 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 aye. But we went into <laughs> we that rehearsal room and Duffy kept saying to us, Stephen Duffy directed, she kept saying, mate, you're doing telly acting here. Right. It's like, you can't do that. It's like, you need to... And what is the difference? The da- like, mate, we're doing a scene, like, there's a scene, for example, there was a scene where um. Benny's saying to Anne, that was his wife, played by Hall Jack, he's he's wanting to, he's wanting to get married and he's wanting to, he sees her as the love of his life, blah, 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 but we were playing it all dead, down and dead, intimate like that, and he's uh, like, mate, we're not dead. He's like, mate, he's going to fucking hear you. He's <laughs> like, that's Terry acting, stop doing the Terry acting. Like, right, cool. But mate, see it to shake that off, man, and actually like... It's 18 years, eh? Oh, mate, it's just, it's just, I don't know, you just go into a kind of... You feel the vibe in Tony I seen and you just you play it the way you'd play it in a studio, but you're like going, We Barry who's bought a ticket sitting up the back's not gonna hear you there, mm-hmm. mate, he's not gonna see you, you need to make sure so yeah. mate, it was just learning a totally different craft and it, yeah. again that aspect of it, I loved it, man. Brilliant. I loved it. I just embraced every every single bit of the word go. I was just I was invested in it. I was you feel getting... a lot more nervous before, like when you're going on stage. Oh, was... big uh-huh. time, mate, big time. So I'm used to being on stage doing panto, but panto's panto. Yeah, people and are there to laugh at you. Aye, 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 this aye, is more serious. Do jump about in dresses, not like it's a half, <laughs> my mean, but actually getting on, a, getting on a stage where you're going, right, this is an actual play. Plus, the fact you're playing such a Scottish icon and it's a true story, you're mm-hmm. like, I don't want to fuck this up, you know what I mean? I need to, I need to, I need to get everything. And I felt... I didn't come away from it. Think people might come away from it and go, he didn't. They didn't think I was great. They thought I was great. He thought I was great. He thought I was alright. But, but that's what it's all about. You're not going to please everybody. But I know I can look myself in the mirror and go, I gave it 
everything I could get, and I Aye. enjoyed it, mate. Brilliant. You mentioned Grado there, it's a character. <laughs> oh, mate, he's... How did you just meet them? What was your first experience <laughs> with Oh, mate. <coughs> God, all right. So he came out of River City, and if you ever come across Grado, he'll tell you he was in eight of the finest episodes of River City, right? That's what he says all the time, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. He's no short of confidence, is he? No, mate, he's mad. But uh, I came into River City, and when that, <sighs> it seems like you've got a great relationship. We have, mate. We're kind of chalk and cheese. We're a bit different, like whereas he's a bit more laid back. I'll, <sighs> mate, he's never early for anything. He's late for every night. But and I, even in, when we go into River City and we're doing stuff in there, right? I'm quite. I like to think I'm a professional, mate. I'm quite OCD. I'm quite, right, let's get this done. I'm always thinking, right, let's get the scenes done. Let's just do it. But that just comes from experience for being in there, right? Whereas Grado comes in, he's pure fucking blah, 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 blah. The camera's turned over. We're ready to shoot. The board's on. We're standing there. And this is the first time I've met him, mate, right? The AD's just about to shout action. He's like, what are you having for your dinner, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I thought he was kidding. I'm like, he's looking at me. I'm like, He's no joking. He's no joking. I'm like, mate, the board's on, we're just about to shout out. Wait, wait, I'm looking about going, I'm waiting for somebody coming out. Am I being punked here or something? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, wait, I don't know, what are you in for your dinner, Bob? He calls me, mate, he still calls me Bob to this day, right? <laughs> and I'm like, but I don't know, I just couldn't stop laughing going, this guy's actually being serious. But he'll tell you yourself, we laugh about it, man. Then it just came out of the insane fight club thing. It was on yeah. the documentary thing. But, mate, he's another man who's just, he's just learned, man. He's just yeah. come on. And I'm not patronising, I'm saying that. It has because he went into TV, into doing panto. The first year he'd done panto, he, he thought he was just there for a joy, he thought he was just a laugh. But mm. again, in itself, panto's a craft. You need to you need to know what you're doing. It's high pressure, man. That's you're intense. there two shows, two a, shows day. a day, mate. Mm. It's hard going, but Grado's just, he'll, he'll turn his head down, man. He'll do it, do you know what I mean? He's just one of the guys. And I mean, you, you can say this, you know, he's he's a character on the telly that's a laugh or so, aye. but... It, it, I mean, the, the roles that he's got itself and the aye. things that he does shows you that he can do it. Mate, he can he do works, it, aye, right? and he's, he's a good, he's no daft. He, he makes out he's daft, but he's no daft, <laughs> aye, I mean. Aye. But we just got on great, mate. But <coughs> he's one of the guys, he's the bane of my life for a week, two weeks, because we did a podcast and see try to get a hold of him, man. Nightmare. Oh, mate, he's absolute, but he's a brilliant guy and I, I, I love what I mean. He's, he's just good fun, man. Where did the podcast idea come from then? You've, for him that's not seen it, obviously Stephen's got his own podcast. Well, it was, aye, it was, it was Grado and Ewan that done it. They two had done it to begin with, Ewan Cameron and Grado, but then Ewan had to take a step back for it for family reasons and stuff. So me and Grado obviously do a panel together every year. Sure. So we're doing the panel and the producer says, look, I want the podcast to keep going. <laughs> Who would you like to date with you? And he's like, I want Bob to do it. And I'm like, right. It's Steven, it's no, Bob. it's Bob. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting there going, mate, what are you talking about? He's like, no, I want. He's like, hold on, hold on. So he, that's the way Grado operates. Like, I've got the producer's on loudspeaker. Right there, there, tell him. I was like, mate, I don't know. What do you want me to do? He's like, no, we'll date together. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, two Rangers men doing a podcast. It's a bit... No, yeah, I mean, it works. It works now. So we got wee Toll involved as well. Yeah. And he's a select man. And he's hilarious. He's funny, mate. He's funny. So that's where it kind of came for me. And we just, we done it. And first couple was good. And I think it's, it's getting there, mate. Well, it's, it's not something I'm used to doing podcasts. And, but I'm kind of enjoying it. But it's weird with this whole set up like lockdown because we were always in the studio together. Yeah. And I feel like meeting... I feel it's harder to have a conversation with somebody when you're not in the same room as Aye, you? totally, uh, mate. Totally. I, I kind of... I don't know, being in the studio, I just feel the dynamics better. Conversation flows better. Aye, That's what but I've sitting, it's well. like, on Zoom, it's like, I'm going to talk, Gail's going to talk, and it's... And you're talking over it's it. It's hard going, mate, Aye. but it's just the way things are. But I'm enjoying it, mate. It's good Who's fun. been your favourite guest? You've had some crackers, especially, you know, being a Rangers fan. You've aye. Andy been, Gorham, Barry Ferguson, aye, Bob Malcolm. Fergie, probably, mate, I'd say, aye, aye definitely. He was brilliant, man. Uh, he's been great. I'm trying to think who else is brilliant. Do you know who was absolutely dynamite on Coyle? Really? Oh, mate, he was, he was... He's got a great story as well. He's... Mate, we could have just, we could have done like part one, part two, part three of his story, man. Like yeah. growing up in the gobbles, all that stuff. It, it, it was great and he was just such a nice guy. Because I played football with him at a few charity matches and he's just such a gentleman and he's so genuine. And you go, I could listen to this guy talking all day. What about these charity matches then? You must have been playing with your heroes as well. Oh, mate, they're great. <laughs> they're brilliant. They're great. Just great days out, man. It's like, especially when we had at Ibrox, that was... That was like a career high, mate. Uh, <laughs> it was yeah. like me and Jordan Young going to that. was just brilliant. And then we got asked to do it, and I was like, right, wow, man. 
when you see who's playing or your Rangers players, like, right, okay. If you're playing against Celtic? <coughs> no, it was a yeah. Rangers select against another Rangers oh, select guy, so it was, it was mad. We go up there, me and Jordan turned up, total rabbit he likes me, turned up, walking in the front door, we've got the suits on and all that, acting like we actually play for Rangers, like, <laughs> brilliant man, walk in. As soon as we walk in, Michael Moles is sitting there, talking to him, he's like, all right, how's you doing? He's like, you playing? I'm like, aye, 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 aye. So, Takes you upstairs, you get the pre-match meal done, and then everybody's there, mate. It That's was like, ah, oh, it was, it was great. Cause it, my son and daughter were there as well, and they were really young at the time. But just daft things like that, mate. It was just, it was a serious was playing? Oh God, Barry Ferguson was there. <clears throat> uh, Richard Goff, Mark Carey, Aaron McCoyst, Amoruso. You must be quite the player to keep oh. up with him. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I had a howler that day, Did mate. I have? couldn't do anything right because I was just. My legs are like Jerry, man, but... Is the standard good? Have they, st- have they still aye, got mate, it? Aye, aye, still got it, man. Pedro Mendes was, mate, off. He was in a dressing room, he was getting changed, man. And you're like, how do you still look like that? Like, aye. he's like an, an Adonis, mate, do you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but no, it was... It's one of the days, mate. Even the ones we do, we do an Airdrie quite a lot. Every year we do one in Airdrie. It's, we think McCoy's and Neil Lennon were playing one. We were playing two years ago, as soon as we was a manager. And they were reporting it on Sky Sports News and all that. That was it's great, mate. Aye. So I think it's, it's really interesting as well because you, you, there's this perception in Glasgow that you know, the Rangers-Celtic rivalry is... And it is, you know, it's known all over mm. the world, but mm. you're saying there that you, you see McCoy and Lennon, for example, on the touchline, head-to-head, and then um, behind closed doors, they're away playing football together, you know, and it's... Ugh, mate, it's, that's the way... It, I mean, who was it we had on our podcast recently they were talking about? Frank McAvenny. And you're like... We, I love Celtic. He says, McCoy loves Rangers. He says, but every time we played football, if we were playing against each other, that night we'd all be going out, we'd yeah. all go out and we'd meet each other. And we'd, I mean, that's how it should be. Like, there's nothing wrong with a rivalry, but seeing it takes a dark, I mean, it goes down that horrible religion route. I just, it's amazing, though, you know, that these people are rivals on the pitch with best parts. Ah, you know? exactly, man. I mean, I grew up in East End, mate. I grew up in that far from Park Kid, and it's like, I've witnessed so much sectarianism bigoted stuff and my dad was really bad with it he was my dad was he was like really invested in all that and I can't I think that's how I'm no really mm-hmm. that way in it because I seen what it was like do you know what I mean so I don't really a lot of it's a generational thing as well isn't it aye, I think the more aye. that we move forward but... aye you need to man it's 2020 do you know what I mean it's crazy people still talk about it and they still that doesn't matter if you're a, if you're a Catholic you support sell, yeah, Rangers or vice versa, Protestant sport. It doesn't matter, it shouldn't matter. You're a Protestant, you need to be Rangers, and mm-hmm. then wherever you come from, you're. I, I mean, my mum's a Catholic. Yep. Half my family are Catholics. Mm-hmm. I was brought up, my mum brought me up, she's a Catholic, my dad's a Protestant. It's like, it doesn't matter. Just your football team's your football team, and that's it. Exactly. What's been the career highlights for Stephen Purden then? <laughs> Other than playing at Isaac. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Mate, I would say I started River City when I was 19, I'm still there. So River City's just. It's my career highlight. It's it's gave me everything I've got. The new, do you know what I mean? It's gave me a good life. It's been good to me. It's got to be our city. Do you know you, you mentioned it earlier was the the town speak thing as well? Town mm-hmm. speak. And it seems to me that there's a collection of you know Scottish actors and directors and writers that are, all come from a very working class background mm-hmm. that have done Aye. really well and you all kind of stick together. And I think for me it's brilliant to see. Totally, mate. I mean, like Ian Robertson. He, he, God, when I was growing up and, and he was in Toonspeed, I used to put eye dyes when I see him in small faces, like, mm. man. And he's for Govan, Ian Connell's the same. All, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with growing up in a different, I think, I don't know, I think there's just something special about a working class background and yeah. people from, like, places I've grew up in, Carntine, Toll Cross, Cran Hill, it's, it's, I'm always all for the East End. I've, I've grew up there, but people just, it's it's tagged with a bad image, and I know there is a lot of violence and crime and stuff in East End, but it's got so many good people, do you know what I mean? It's, and there's so much potential to Oh, them. mate, there is, and I you see... I feel that this speak specifically, but also other initiatives, there's aye, so many out there aye, that are there is, man, doing there so is, well for Aye, there is, definitely, I mean, I, I don't know, man, I just, there's just something about, I mean, I moved to Steps, I stay in Steps now. But, I see you moving up in the world, eh? Aye, but I, I, <laughs> me and my wife moved there, right, and I'm like, I still... When I go to drive somewhere, I like to drive down the way, go through the East End where I stayed. Do you know what I mean? Cause I just, it's home. I still love it, man. Do you know what I mean? Still, everything about it, still home to me. But what's the future hold then? Where, you say River City will be back on soon, but what else have you uh, got up? I think we'll talk about the Benny Lynch thing. There might be something again with that. Might come up. Uh, 
and just, I don't know, mate, just River City and just maybe some more additions that I don't get. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, Graham Armstrong on here, if anybody's no checked out his book, it's called The Young Team, it's brilliant. And <sighs> mate, that's what I want, I want to be involved in that, man, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll see, I've said, I've spoke to him about it millions of times and I know other people that are interested in it as well, so... We'll see, well, listen, I'm hoping to see you on that. I would love to be on that, mate. I would, I've said that to Graham numerous times, man. And MD that's watching, it's involved, man. Give us a shout. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just, it's been an absolute pleasure. No, cheers for having me, mate. Cheers. Thank you for your time. No, cheers, mate. Thank you. Top man. Cheers. Thanks to everyone that's watched this episode of the DW Podcast. Uh, if you've not done so already, please like and subscribe. Uh, thanks to Stephen for your time. Uh, and thanks for watching and listening. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>